and we are come to the second session after a very interesting uh, preliminary session of keynote address. It was really amazing and a good way to look forward to. So I'll just cut the small things and uh, we have a good session here. What we are looking at is uh, agriculture, our connected future and how agriculture is transforming using technology. For that, we have our eminent panelists who have been already introduced. Shashank from Dehat, Vilas from Sayadri Farms, Sanjay Deshmukh from the Activate Biotech, and our good old Venus, who is a farmer's son, who is working with Deshpande Foundation. So, without telling too much, just kind of get into the conversation. So, I'll start with you. And uh, by the way, uh, Shashank had to leave by about 12.15. Uh, he need to catch a fight by about 115. So most of the questions that I'm going to address will be first to him, and we'll kind of continue with that and continue with the rest of the members. So just uh, the concept is basically Indian agriculture is changing, and you have been at the forefront of seeing it, believing it, and taking some actions around it. So what do you think has been happening right now, and where are we? Uh, thanks, Benjamin. Thanks for accommodating the request. Uh, so, uh, in our case, from the intervention perspective, we have been seeing the sector since 2010-2011. Uh, that's a separate debate that initial 7-8 years of my life, I grew up at my own farm and again, as a family, we used to own two and a half, three acres of land. So, that's a different perspective. But getting back to your question, Candidly, I keep saying that we started the hub when agri-tech was agriculture. And uh, last 10, 11 years, it's a it's a very short span from agri perspective. And a lot of you know changes you know, we have been seeing and experiencing and all across, horizontally, vertically. A uh, few of the things, if I highlight few of the top things. First and the foremost is the overall connectivity, physical as well as digital. I I again I always believe, right? I mean agri for India, 14% of GDP, more than 350 billion dollar market, in terms of number of farmers, more than 140 million farmers, number of problems to solve in terms of food wastage or climate or input uh, you know penetration to farmers or advising, number of things. But still I think uh, people had always been very shy to get into the space. Uh, I feel I think what has been holding most of the outsiders people in general uh, or the generalist people was the connectivity. In last 10 years, uh, all across, across India, the way how the overall connectivity has improved. And that's the reason why there is a green shoot that, you know, that more and more people coming forward with their different approach, different innovation, which is good, which is the need of the art from the sector's perspective. The second is the overall, I would say, uh, the collaborative mindset. And collaboration uh, between the corporates, startups, foundations, and the government, right? Because it's a it's a very large problem to solve. The the sample size of this problem statement is huge. It's not possible for any single individual and organization. And the way again, in last 10, 11 years, again, I mean, have been experiencing, right? Because as of date, again, as they have, we are working with more than uh, I think 800 unique agricultural businesses, whether uh, the bulk agri input manufacturers or output buyers or financial institution or agriculture universities but uh, it, it used to take a lot of effort from our side to convince every single you know organization or institution to collaborate during early days but uh, again that's not the case anymore uh, so overall I think the mindset of collaboration this is definitely one big change or shift uh, you know I have, I've been seeing uh, the last and again I must highlight is the overall uh, and Obviously, the last one is here, so I, I must not forget <coughs> mentioning this, which is the overall uh, cooperatization, which is obviously the FPO. We all know that India is a country where uh, more than 75-80% farmers are small, with the average land holding of 1-2 to two hectare. But even in reality, even this 1-2 to two hectare of land is available in 3 to 4 different land parcels. And long story short, Building economy of scale at an individual farmer level for the individual farmer's family is impossible for anything, whether it's input linkage 
or output leakage or bank or information or anything. And that's where the group formation, the community based approach, that's the only solution. And again, the way how in last four, five, six years, the overall acceptance, adoption by the policymakers, different stakeholders, and also by the farmers themselves around the FPO has happened. Again, it's too early, it's, it's an early sign, but uh, that's definitely a green shoot I see towards uh, you know, better agriculture development of India. I know I can go on and on, but I'll stop with these three points. There's an amazing point that you mentioned that you know connectedness is one key area that has come in the last couple of years and you see that change happening there. So Vilas sir, how do you feel, I mean, on the same question? I think, uh, <laughs> as you rightly uh, pointed, at the uh, individual farmers level, it's very difficult to uh, survive in the uh, system. So, uh, how to solve that issue to make that uh, individual farmers uh, farming as a profitable venture? So that is the core challenge for Indian agriculture. Because you see that uh, what are the population dependent on agriculture? So, everybody wants to do farming. That is the reality, uh, that is the truth, that is the harsh truth. But still, they are doing farming because they are not getting any opportunity in other fields. So, as in India, we have to sort out this situation. Either we need to create more and more opportunities, more jobs in other sectors, so the population who is uh, doing the agriculture currently, they can switch to the other sector, what happens in the US or in the Western world. So, that should be the one aspect. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Okay. So, uh, as a country, we need to solve this situation that the people who are dependent on agriculture, either we need to create uh, opportunities uh, for these people in other sectors, in manufacturing sector, in service sector, like uh, China, what uh, they did in the last 30 years. They shifted their uh, the population dependent on agriculture in the manufacturing sector, by creating uh, opportunities in that sector. So, that is the one way, or we need to have some uh, System or ecosystem approach where farming can be a profitable venture with the whatever the situations around that farmer. So I think that is the biggest challenge for Indian agriculture. And in that direction, now uh, as he uh, rightly pointed out, in the last 10 years, a lot of things are happening. And that is because of the mainly uh, because of the technology uh, adoption in agriculture sector and then the growth mindset uh, coming in the agriculture sector. People have started uh, looking after agriculture as a purely as like an industry. So that is happening on the top level. It is not up to the farmer level. But now people uh, realize that India can have uh, prosperity through agriculture sector, not just on the individual farmer, but as a country level. So that is, I think, uh, happening uh, in the last 10 years, what I see uh, during this uh, last decade. That's, that's really wonderful. I think you touched upon uh, a very major point that the farmer doesn't have the economic you know, viability to kind of individually come up, and that's an important point. Uh, just as you know, uh, for the audience, I think uh, we have about 220 million people that are employed in agriculture in this country, and in the last uh, uh, 10 years or decade, we have about moved out about uh, 30 million people out of agriculture and largely to service sector economy. Rural uh, still right now have a big uh, service sector economy. But coming back to the same point, I just want to address it to Ines, is that how do you really look at uh, uh, you know, technology being used to increase the income of the farmer? And what are the things that you feel are necessary? Okay. So thank you, Ben. So, so first of all, I want to connect uh, because this point uh, relate to my uh, personal journey also because I came 11 years before in Deshpande Foundation for in Deshpande Skilling, learning English and computer from Rajasthan, a small part of Mewat. And uh, I am the first generation graduate from the my family. So, so how uh, capability, if you build capability, so it transforms whole family and my father sold half of land. 10 bigger land, we are the first person in village who sold land and 6 years I did not went village because of that guilty. So then I decided nay, I need to learn and go back. So so my last year, 10, 10 years journey, 10 plus year journey in Deshpande Foundation because we lots of time we have an idea and we very well articulate. 
but it not relate to the farmer, what farmer needed. Because loss of solution came and they fell, because it's not co-created. So, so my thing is either technology or any uh, new approach or better approach, it should be co-created through farmer and the founder or the technology. That's the experience. So if I take foundation, our example, so we work with as like everyone maybe visited Farmport program. So we started with Better Cotton Initiative before Farmport. Then uh, under Better Cotton in Initiative, we have one program like water management. So most of farmers say hey, it's a waste of time because we don't have water, how we can manage the water. And then idea came. So, so we validate this point in another 50 village and that's where our fund program is started. So we have done 150 free and we just te tested either it's make uh, 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 impact on farmer life or not. And then we done around 7,000 through cost sharing. So now we want to do 100,000. So earlier we used to go and select every site, but when you want to do 100,000, it's not possible. You need technology. So technology which serves humanity. So I think that that's best part and that's why we were able to now our each employee even I did my master's in political science and I had agriculture program in this kind of foundation. So it's not rocket science. You can learn everything. So, so I think it's more building local community, bringing right technology which everyone can use. I think that's uh, my experience. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah, you can have your better uh, articulate of the things that you have mentioned is really great. Yeah, uh, we'll come back to you on same thing. I think there are more stories that you can come out. But I come want to come back to Sanjay. Sanjay, in this entire context, you are coming from the biotech field. So, as a technology and for agriculture, how do you foresee this? See, even before biotech, there is some other take which is missing. Please. Which is communication going to the farmer. Wow. In 1960, Green Revolution onwards, Government of India has practically stopped extension services. And farmer is no longer getting the information. So the dealer becomes a de facto communicator to the farmer. So even if you develop technology, product, solutions, anything, if the intermediary who is taking this information to the farmer has a vested interest, then that will never ever serve any purpose. So you know, that's where foundations can play a much bigger role. The void which the government has left, that is required to be fulfilled. And that's, I think, we have to find a hybrid model between technology and human intervention to address these issues. Thank you. Oh, very short answers. Huh? You know, if you do this, we solve 99% problems. <laughs> <laughs> I think very well said. I think. Uh, you mentioned that the uh, the core for the agriculture to be solved is the information. See what happens, suppose if farmer needs to use only 40 grams of pesticide, but the dealer gets commission on by selling 200 grams. The dealer will sell 200 grams and farmer will use that and you will have eaten poison in your food. Right? That's right. So where do you break this chain? Only the communication can break this chain. The technology by itself is not a solution. The communication is a much bigger problem today. And that is what we need to address through technology and human intervention put together. Thank you, Sanjay. Uh, I'll come back to you, uh, Mr. Shant. You mentioned a very critical point of information. So in your technology that you are doing at Dehat, how do you address this entire game of information to the farmer and how does he use it? So, uh, I think needless to say, uh, more personalized, customized, regionalized. And I think uh, the previous question about yours, I think well, without technology it's not possible. Forget about state, forget about district, you go from one village to another and things change. Right? The texture of soil, maybe the water table, uh, maybe the sowing date of the crop or the variety. So, obviously, if you aspire to provide regionalized, personalized, customized advisory, obviously it's possible only through technology, but I think that's one very uh, core philosophy. But uh, again, in our case, uh, with the journey of Dehat, I think the overall journey has been thoroughly bottom-up. So we have been learning from our own ground grassroots experiences and 
during early days itself, somehow we learned that standalone information to Indian farmer, uh, it doesn't help. Uh, it, it might sound as an exaggeration, but again, that was our inference that just the information, it doesn't help. Uh, and in fact, from the psychology perspective, in fact, we found it even more, you know, depressing for the farmers. Right? So someone who is selling, let's say, potato at 8 rupees kg, and you're giving them information that you can sell 15 rupees kg in that market, but technically that farmer is not in a position to take the produce to that market. So in a way, in fact, as a family, they start feeling bad that someone else is getting 15 rupees, I'm getting only 8, and like, I have not done anything wrong. So number of such things. Huh? So, so that's how basically we built our thesis that the information has to have a follow-on action. And two, again, the even for that follow-on action, there has to be a handholding. There has to be an affordability as well as, as well as the accessibility question. And that's how the whole construct and the model of the heart was conceptualized. That yes, we definitely want to provide customized information to every farmer every week, highly data driven, but the, every single information has to have a follow-on action and even for that action, basically, again, our physical Dehat center is going to be there close to the farm gate in the catchment area of 3 to 5 kilometers itself. So that again, the farmer, again, because of having the small ticket size of transaction, they can't go to 50 kilometer per point of transaction also. So that's how this physical as well as digital uh, mode of or the model of execution basically we conceptualized. Right? So number of things. I mean, for every single thing, the information is linked to that. Right? So for example, if we have to tell a farmer that uh, any information related to weather, uh, it doesn't go like uh, this is the temperature, this is the wind speed, this is the relative humidity, because for a farmer, again, they can't process it. Okay, so so yes, uh, I think that's the that's the larger thing, and and then uh, the or then the third thing is that uh, the crop agnostic, and that's how I think we have built our capability over the years, and I still believe that it's still a big thing in a long long way that for every single crop or for every single variety, how you can have the same philosophy of information, action, and action related to whether it's related to the input linkage or the market linkage or the linkage to get finance or insurance and everything. So that they can get everything related to agriculture under one roof. And then this roof has to get, has to be closer to the farm gate. And then something what you know, uh, Sanjay mentioned, right? I think so then we see the power, right? And then they actually listen. And not just they listen, but they, they also start acting you know, towards this. So, yeah. What do you say, Inas? I mean, how did you use technology to make your farm plants? Or... So, very good question. So, so the phase first, we have then like 150 is full grant, phase second, 7,000, over to 50 crore, like almost 75% contribution comes from a farmer and 25 we raise, but now we want to achieve 100,000 and it's a fully all cost come from customer, our beneficiary farmer through loan. So when you and our as a foundation, our promise is 100% loan repayment. So when you promise 100% loan repayment, so your product quality should be very high because now the way we run 7,000, we, I used to go, my team used to go and select site uh, and uh, guide farmer where to put inlet and outlet. Now you cannot do as like so. So when you want to go 100,000, your product should be same. So like mobile, either one, any model, uh, uh, iPhone, it's in India or America or anywhere, it's the same. So farm phones should be seen like same. In social sector, I think we lack sometimes because one, uh, Plot is different, second is different. So how do we bring? And then, so uh, red flex. <coughs> so we see like, I have 400 people team and uh, last year experience I will tell you. So we were very well prepared. So, but uh, we somehow not able to achieve our tar target because the red flex is like two months later, we know what is the problem. And then time already gone because we have 90 day window. We need to construct every day 100 farm pond if you want to reach that 100,000. So how to get red flag every day, every hour? It's only because of technology when your team use technology. So now our we are sitting here, I know what happening today. Where things is not going well and going well, 
where things are not going well, we need to immediately take decisions. So your response time is very, very lesser. Second, as like Sasan uh, said, Dehat, like we need to, when farmer, water is the biggest multiplier, their income increase, they get good input, but where they sell? So, until unless you know how much metric ton like green gram came or any fruit, the institutional buyer will not come. So, you see, it's possible only because of the technology, you know, in today, which area, how much metric ton green gram is coming and guava is coming, papaya is coming, then you negotiate. You see, so power. So, I think that's the technology power and I can see even when I we used to do uh, uh, thousand, so it's like very hectic and stress. Today we want to do 100,000 and I have my 40% time to chit chat people because it's impossible because of the technology and we can seek new ideas, we can build our capability. So I think that's where the whole thing is going and that's why like thanks to Subo. So first time like we were having in foundation 41 app. Every new startup want to come here and digitalize things. And but exactly is not solving the problem. The when Supo came, he co-created this solution. Everybody is following, every field staff, 900 field staff following the same thing. So that's it's only possible when we co-create. So I think that way we are coming and long way to go. Every day we learn and we hope how do we improve that. And we are thinking this farm point project as a product. So every pond should be qualitative, every farmer should be able to create credit worthiness. So tomorrow every bank say, hey, I want to be part of this, this program. That's a commitment and technology is big enabler. And I can see last like two, three years. So we, we, we hope this will be the game changer in the country and other part of the world. Thank you. That's, that's, that's really brilliant. I think uh, you are a very big inspiration. And you mentioned one or two major points in your uh, uh, conversation that co-creation is the way to go. If you don't understand the uh, sector, the pharma, you won't be able to create the solution. Not everything is directly driven to the person, but it has to be an enabler that changes the economic model of the pharma, if I'm right. Yeah. yeah. So coming back to the same point, I think we have the FPO, Sayadri, which has done significantly better. Uh, compared to any FPOs in the country. I think there are some very uh, deep insights on which this was built. It included technology, it included human power, it included something as trust. So, what are your thoughts on that? So basically... Hello? Close it. Close it. I think um, on the information side, uh, as a all the speakers, they rightly said that there is a huge gap on a different level, at the farmer level, production related issues, climate related information, multiple uh, other stakeholders, their connection with farmers. So, I think that is the one issue which we need to address. But uh, the most important uh, issue which uh, we also need to understand is the consumer uh, expectation about the food, about the, his day-to-day uh, -day diet. So as a consumer, now uh, we know that everybody is uh, looking for uh, food, uh, food safe product, healthy product, and also that uh, he expects that that product should be affordable. So that is the basic uh, expectation of any consumer, whether he is uh, from uh, local market or from the overseas market. So that is the reality. And that problem also we need to address uh, with the technology. So when I am uh, giving any uh, claim about my product as a farmer, if I am saying that my product is organic or my product is safe, so how the customer can believe on that uh, my, uh, claim? That is uh, one area which we need to address. There are certification processes, there are some uh, audit uh, systems. But I think there are uh, limitations for auditing system. You can uh, create a fake data, you can have a uh, lot of uh, different uh, challenges with this uh, system. But with technology, we can solve this issue. That we realize at the uh, organization level. Our journey has started with the uh, Europe market export uh, in 2004. Before Sayadri, it was just a small tech farmers group. And uh, uh, in 2004, I did a four containers export to Netherlands. And from there, uh, our journey uh, has started. So that gave us uh, the consumer's uh, view, that understanding of the consumer's expectation. 
because uh, in Europe market, we know the laws are uh, very stringent about the food safety standards, and consumer is so well aware about all these uh, issues. Uh, NGOs are uh, they are having uh, uh, good control on uh, all these uh, issues. So you cannot play with the uh, market on this uh, side. So as a uh, farmer, though you have a lot of issues, whether you are a small farmer, you have a lot of difficulties around you. But if you want to crack that market, you need to uh, fulfill all that standard. So that is a basic uh, expectation. And at a small farmer's level, uh, it's a big challenge to understand the customer's expectations and then uh, specifically the customer-facing uh, stakeholders like the supermarkets, how are, uh, they are dealing with the uh, different products. They have a lot of options. It is not only the India. There are multiple options like India, uh, in the same period, if, uh, South Africa is supplying grapes, Chile is supplying grapes. So they have options. So you have to compare with all these options and uh, accordingly you need to improve your standard. So that is your uh, core challenge. And that challenge uh, we understand on our level from the beginning that we have to solve this uh, challenge on the consumer side and also on the farmer side, the core uh, issue or the core uh, expectation that my farm should be profitable unit, whatever the size, whatever the circumstances, but it should be a profit making unit. So considering these two stakeholders' uh, expectation, then uh, we need to create a complete uh, ecosystem which will be a technology enabled uh, system and in that we can have give assurance to the customer that this product which is coming from the different farm, whether it is um, our um, 1,000 farms handled by 500 plus farmers, but all these farms are producing the same quality standard as per your uh, market expectation or as per your uh, personal uh, your expectation. And that assurance is coming because of the technology uh, solutions. So uh, in the initial period uh, from 2004 to 2010, during that period, uh, APIDA has created a great net system. So that was one uh, our uh, tool, and now also ready. But from 2010, we realized that instead of depending upon the government system, we should have our own uh, in-house uh, technology solutions, or we should have some partnership uh, with the technology companies to make that tool more and more perfect. So last years, we are working with uh, technology companies to create uh, um, these uh, solutions to create um, uh, all the traceability systems and also one more um, important challenge uh, to create efficiency at different levels. So that is a big challenge uh, we need to address in our uh, small scale farming. And though we are having uh, small lands, but still our efficiency should be with the global market. Because we are competing to global market, that is the reality. Whether I am selling in uh, Nasik or in Mumbai or I am selling in uh, uh, London, but competition on the global uh, level. Somebody can uh, bring his produce in my, uh, my market, that is also possible. I can also sell my product in uh, overseas market. So both things are possible. But now then, uh, considering this cooperation, my efficiency should be as per the, uh, my uh, global competition. So to, for that, I need to improve my productivity. I need to improve my quality as per that uh, market. And that, is, uh, that should happen on the, all the farms. So their technology is playing a real uh, role. Because for creating the standard at different farms, so that is a base solution to have control on different farms. So whatever the things are happening on the farm, daily all the whatever the activities farmer is doing, whether it is irrigation management, PGC management, or nutrition management, if that data is coming on real time in the system, then you can give right advice, you can guide him in the right way, and that that impacts on the overall your quality and productivity. Plus the uh, day-to-day -day challenges on the climate um, change side or the weather side, information side, that also you can address with the uh, this digital tool. So all these things happen in Sayadri in last ten years, and that gave us uh, real strength to create an ecosystem around uh, our crops. Our crops are um, all our perishable crops. We are dealing uh, only horticulture crops: grapes, tomato, pomegranate, mango, bananas. All these crops are having. Um, um, Different challenges. Perishability is a big challenge, but seasonal nature is another big challenge. So um, you have to uh, handle these challenges on the production side uh, level and also on post service side. So that happens because of these uh, different technology innovations at uh, production level, post service level. On market side also, we have now full-fledged traceability system for all, all our communities. 
market, the market. We are selling uh, our products in Nasi with full traceability. Same uh, system we are providing to the European customer. So that is creating trust between the customer and that helps to create a market to create a better value for our members. Thank you, Vilaji. That's a, that's a wonderful answer. Very brilliant. I think you are the, one of the only guys who are kind of uh, in the FPO segment doing extremely well. Uh, because you need to leave, Shashank, I have the last question for you. Uh, Shashank, there's a lot of things that have been talked about here. Technology usage, you have been using it. Uh, this is a very uh, typical question. How do we go forward from here? What is that? India requires to replicate this and make it across board. That's that's one question that most of us would have in our mind. And what are the key challenges behind it? So uh, again, I will not talk about technology because I think that is established. Uh, but I think uh, the foundation of technology has to be uh, built to ensure interoperability. Uh, for example, when Dennis mentioned, right, that at some point in time you guys had number of apps, right? So the when all of us you know have been building technology, uh, it it must ensure the interoperability because then only the collaboration we all are talking about, I think that will be established. So that should be that's more on the tech development side. Uh, the two is the right mindset. What I touched a little bit in the beginning that you know, that let's say how we are contributing as per our strength, okay, strength of biotech, strength of maybe uh, right uh, seed germplasm, strength of having right post-harvest value addition, strength of having last uh, last mile, you know, aggregation or distribution model, right? So I think then only the overall concoction will be visible. So the right mindset of collaboration and as I said that which is which is already, you know, again which is visible already, okay. Uh, and then the third is obviously that uh, Going deeper and deeper and deeper, you know, with our intervention, it's a, it's a, it's a. Again, uh, as I, as I always say that, you know, that let's say it's a high volume, low margin business, and margin. It's not just from the PNS perspective. I think this is one thing what I personally have been experiencing with Deha that along with the scale, uh, many problems get solved easily in this in this space in the sector, and problems related to right market, problem related to getting right technology at the farm, or problem related to uh, maybe the logistics or everything and even problem related to building the trust with the farmer, right? So along with the scale, you solve many problems. So 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 the overall the third and which is not possible when the overall intervention or the touch point for the farmer, you know, does not have a very unique and extraordinary experience and benefit for the farmer, right? Whether it's a right seed or a right market or right information or whatever it is. Last not the least is the last mile, I strongly believe, because that is broken. Many times again, we have been seeing that yes, there is a buyer uh, with a strong willingness to source directly from farmers. There is a farmer, probably because of the right FTO intervention, now qualified to grow high quality produce for that buyer, but just because of the fact that there is no last mile and hence basically the collaboration is best. And that's the only reason, right? I mean, we see that if we just lay down the entire value chain where one side we have farmers, uh, more than 100 million farmers if we talk about just India. Another side again we have 14% GDP with different institution with some proposition for farmers. But if you take an aerial picture between these millions of farmers and then again this multi-billion dollar again businesses, you will find long parallel layers and that's where basically things get lost. Why this long layers exist because of not having a robust last mile. So I think that is something which is, and that's what I refer right when I said that now the connectivity problem is solved, physical as well as digital both. So I think uh, it's the right time because that's the only that's the only reason why people like us have you know started getting into this space, right? I mean then we have been started building the last mile again, and for us, and that's why again at Deha, we don't put any crop as our topmost priority. Right. I mean, for us, I mean, farmer is the is, is the only priority. And then again, to solve this last mile, we felt that you know that many times we got demand, we got supply, but again, we couldn't do anything. And that's how because again, back in 2013, 14, we decided that let's build this last mile by ourselves. Right. Otherwise, it's not possible. 
otherwise again i mean you keep generating demand or again supply but again the overall execution will always go for a toss and that's how today through the through our 11200 dehat centers now we could build our last mile to again more than 120000 villages of india and again in the first session you heard that you know, there, there are already there are 625000 villages so still in fact we are less than 20% that's still a long way to go so the last mile is definitely one thing which india would definitely need to achieve what we what we aspire for and uh, one more last thing is the uh, i think uh, the overall reversal of the approach uh, approach in the sense and for anything for that matter right let's say if we talk about uh, and and partly i think vilas had touched as well right i mean just because of not having a direct digital physical connectivity between these agri business institution whether it's government whether it's an input company or financial institution or buyer or machinery company whatever and the farmers the overall things are are very very the overall way of execution is very efficient so for example i mean when it comes about market linkage probably farmers or maybe on behalf of farmer any local aggregator would take the produce from the village to the closest mandi which is maybe 40 50 km far price discovery happens once the guy is there in the mandi with the produce if they don't like the price we all know right nobody would come back right i mean we uh, uh, like you uh, know when uh, we don't understand these logics right so so we we keep saying ki wo matlab samshan hai jo wapas aata nahi gaya to gari jal gaya so the but the whole point is like you know all the previous points what i mentioned if that is take then probably again we could reverse the process that you know that probably we can ensure the price discovery first and based on that farmers can decide whether i have to sell today or i don't have to or whether i need to harvest the crop or i don't everything i think you can go on and right similarly so is true for the input side it's a top down approach right input companies they place their product to cnf or distributor then a large retailer small retailer to a farmer nobody has availability that you know that how the inventory liquidation is happening right and at the end of season basically there will be a stock return right again if all those previous points what i raised if that's done one one can reverse the process that you can aggregate the demand from farmers depending upon how much land holding you have which or crop you are growing which or variety you are growing everything number of things like right? fertilizer that's a huge you know again it has a huge economic impact you know on the government side right imagine again just with this a uh, reverse approach i mean one can always forecast that how much area under cultivation basically you know i have in a certain district and based on that probably you can decide that how much fertilizer i need to allocate for a certain district everything so is to for her be side like everything so i think that is one area and it doesn't i don't want to say that you know, let's say as they are we are doing all these things <laughs> but i think this is the approach probably i think we are heading towards and uh, again i think as a team all of us probably i think will have to move sooner or later in that direction if we want to bring high efficiency if we want to again uh, improve the income of farmers right i mean what partly it does to a buyer he needs something there is no way how they can convey the requirement to farmer i need corn with high protein content i need chili with high protein see no that's not the case and that's only reason why we have particular supposed harvest loss but again i think uh, long story short i think the overall change or the reverse of approach but the strong prerequisites of this approach is last mile the data availability the trust with the farmer for the behavioral change okay and obviously the overall the the digital stack where multiple people can come with their expertise uh but yes there is a hope because i think i see definitely many of the institution organizations including they are in moving in that direction and i always say it's not a winner takes all market uh, yeah because the because the sample size of the problem statement is is huge and you know too big too big to solve yeah thank you thanks thank a lot and i'm so sorry i need to rush like this but would you, you have time to take one question from the audience sure, sure, sure. Tom? so let us open this to the audience if there are any questions from the audience for the panelists शशांक सर इट्स 
I've got my team working on Rasendia startup where we started uh, educating farmers regarding the application we've developed and then uh, uh, tried it with Manchurial district and Nizamba district. So can we have a skilling program? Is it possible to do it on a whole India level uh, to have a farmer school where we can educate them with the technology, not on the very high level, at least they can understand what the mediator is speaking or at least what uh, the people are speaking about the crop and as, as we said, uh, the cycles and everything, whatever we have been mentioning. Conceptually, this is the this is the most efficient way of extension, which is the farmer school. When any of the like someone from the same community, someone from the uh, from from themselves, right, is uh, uh, is is qualified to become a trainer, and that's the moment when they see they relate. And it's a very proven concept. Different people, different companies, organizations, in fact, they have been using the same concept. Again, I keep I'll keep repeating. Vilasa himself is an example, right? I mean, because when he started grapes farming and then basically again, hundreds of uh, thousands of other grapes farmers could motivate, could get trained because of what he's done. So concept wise, I think this is the best or the most efficient way. What I just, what I understood that probably I think you are just trying to democratize it. So that I think the same thing can be done uh, by the community or the farmers themselves without having any catalyst, right? Or uh, maybe at a village level or at a crop level. Uh, and uh, it's, it's, it's a very strong and tried and tested concept. So you should do that. Uh, the, the important factors towards scalability would be same is that uh, user friendliness because, because the community person will have to use that interface. So how, how they can create content uh, easily. So the overall user friendliness, I think that's one. And the second is that uh, you know, personalization. So, but uh, would love to learn more uh, and maybe we can chat offline. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Thank you much. Time for your relief. <laughs>
win win for bank win win for employee win win for startup anybody when any solution we think i think even partnership definitely things will happen and i had like almost 30 plus people i invited from rajasthan because in 2011 when i did my fellowship and i speak this language so so everybody laugh yaar ye pagal aadmi kahan gaya hai seekh ke aaya hai so mai sora until unless we have a critical mass so even when we do any pilot if you don't have that number now 100000 1100 worth of economy everybody listen when earlier when we started like 200 600 aise yaar panch foot ka aadmi pagal ho gaya hai isko kuch nahi pata hai and now but everybody listen that when you demonstrate you cross that critical number of so i think so that's the only thing i experience so i am sharing what i have been going through and it's help really helping now with technology we prototype this when it started in maharashtra and hopefully support of rupal and lots of gst guidance we will be very soon in rajasthan my hope is this can taken in every part of country we need to build the local community which we have written approach required thank you <laughs> hello yeah, hello everyone mandar here so even from the panel can answer my question so my question is climate change is the major challenge in agriculture sector nowadays so okay. how the technology can tackle this problem so this is my question <laughs> so climate change obviously impacts everything but one of the fundamental things can be done is to understand how plant itself operates what we have been trying to do over the last 40 to 50 years we try and pump in fertilizers herbicides pesticides from outside without understanding the mechanism of action of the plant itself so for example suppose you say plant is becoming diseased or sick what it does is it has a volatile organic compound it uses for broadcasting its state of existence and other plants receive that now if we build sensors to understand it and then capture volatile organic compound and use it for further processing that is how we can possibly decide to use herbicide or pesticide only on that single plant which is diseased and not kill other plants so obviously what happens is climate change kind of a situation we say the blanket world but if we start understanding this impact and isolate the impact and treat that then you don't really need very very complicated things to deal with that Is that answer or you expect little more? Hello, Kamal. I'm Subhash Mane. Presently located in Kolhapur. I actually belong to North Karnataka, Belgaum district. Well, when I was a child, uh, this was some 55 years back. Uh, our village, which is located on the river banks of two rivers, Ved Ganga and Dud Ganga, they conglomerate at our village. The water was only there during the rainy season. At the end of Diwali, uh, the rivers would have dried up. And when we used to go to our villages in the summers, it was all dry. So crops would be only during the rainy season or subsequent to rainy season. By the end of uh, November, December, everything was uh, dry and uh, the, uh, the fields are all taken. Uh, now what has happened is that because of construction of dams everywhere in our region we have plenty of water 24 <laughs> 12 months we have water there and the crop pattern has totally changed okay what has happened is um, you can see everywhere there is sugar cane okay and uh, this problem is totally reverse to what unis has shared as far as public darwa is concerned and uh, earlier you see when i was a young uh, boy uh, the, the crops would be jowar wheat and uh, and all its uh, products uh, sugar groundnuts and all and our whole uh, house would have been filled by these bags of uh, wheat jowar and sugar, uh, groundnuts but now as i said everything has changed and the whole farming pattern pattern has switched to sugar cane not a single square uh, inch area in the fields is left and everything is green but what has happened is everything is now sugar cane sugar cane sugar cane and uh, this 
has impacted the, the culture also of the populace there. And uh, what we feel or see as see it as a issue, you see this is degrading the farms because of uh, the use of fertilizers and all these things. So uh, how to change this mindset of the people is a, is an issue I believe in, in certain areas of uh, let, let's, let's say Karnataka also as well as in Maharashtra. So can anyone throw some light on this? I think uh, you need to think uh, on this issue in a commercial manner. Why farmer has shifted to sugar cane from the traditional uh, cereal crops? See, for uh, all the farmers, that land is the only income source. So he is doing that uh, farming to get the income uh, for uh, his daily needs. And uh, from that, he is also expecting that his uh, personal food needs or family needs, that should be uh, sufficed. But if uh, he can buy from the market, whatever the need uh, on the cereal side, pulses side, oil, oil side, and for that uh, uh, for that purpose, if he is getting the income from one crop, so definitely he will prefer that uh, that uh, type of situation. So that's why he is shifting to the sugar cane because in sugar cane we have assured some uh, minimum income source because of the assured uh, price, also because of the ecosystem around sugar cane where uh, all that. Um, harvesting and also the um, seed supply, everything is happening around that farmer with some organic structure. So he feels that that is the safest uh, crop for him to get the super income and also some uh, better income compared to the traditional crops. So if you are creating same system around the traditional crops, if you are is getting the same income uh, with the jawar or with the wheat or with the oil seed, then definitely he will also think in that matter. So instead of uh, sugar cane, I can prefer with this crop where uh, I can have uh, same income and also I can uh, protect my soil in better way, I can uh, protect my other soil in better way. So there is a income difference coming between the, these all crops and that's why this situation is happening. That's why more and more farmer is going after sugar cane. So we need to think that all these crops should have economically feasible for the farmer in same manner. Then uh, situation will change. Excuse me. I have one question. Yeah. We can take this last question. Yeah. So, okay. so I'm Nitin Naik from Synergy Connect. And uh, in Maharashtra, we work with almost our application. E.P. Parni has been working with 1.5 crore farmers in uploading crops. I think we are all developing technologies around it. But one of the most important aspect of is changing the mindset of the farmer from being a farmer to an entrepreneur. I think uh, everyone of us, especially in the development sector or even to the policy level, are we looking forward to it? Because I am being looking, looked down as a farmer and my next generation is not willing to be into farming. So what would we be doing together to change that mindset and bring that entrepreneurial change from a farmer to an entrepreneur? I think uh, as a government, uh, we need to have uh, some specific uh, definition of living income for the farmer. That is, uh, I think, the first important factor government should uh, think. That, uh, like the living wages, the living income, that definition uh, we need to create. Now we, we are talking about doubling farmer income or uh, other uh, different initiatives. But uh, nowhere we are talking about some uh, sustainable income or the living income and also the stable income for the farmer. So we are asking him to do the all the gamble around that crop and uh, in that uh, we are having policy for supporting him uh, with the fertilizer, subsidized fertilizer or water like that. But no assurance about the income. So he has to take all the risks and in that uh, we are asking him to uh, support the community with the uh, food security, with the, all the um, uh, nutrient. All these things we are talking uh, about uh, uh, Indian agriculture but nowhere we have definition of uh, living income for the farmer. If that will come, then uh, all these initiatives like the Yipani or whatever the initiatives government is taking, in that farmer will willingly take participation. That all these things are happening for my own, uh, uh, some uh, purpose or for my own benefit. So I need to uh, uh, respond to them in uh, whatever the best possible way. So in Graves we have realized this thing, that when that income uh, is getting assured, then farmer's participation, in, it comes with uh, his own uh, heart. He, uh, he is ready to accept all the technology, he is ready to respond to all the, whatever the initiatives you have. 
because uh, from that initiative is getting immediate benefit. So that should happen uh, around our Indian agriculture. So government's uh, initiative plus the, uh, also the, the farmers' initiative, farmers' uh, mindset uh, development around the entrepreneurship, both are equally important. But the first government uh, initiative, I think that is a, a key part. And uh, when it is uh, that uh, he is getting assurance as a farmer that income is secured, definitely he will start thinking like entrepreneur. Instead of uh, doing any other activity, any other business, he can compare uh, his farming, his crop in that manner that this is the better uh, option for me for uh, getting the secured income and also for my daily needs. So that entrepreneur mindset development can start with uh, some assurance. Thank you. I think this was a wonderful session. We could not take more questions. I know there are a lot of questions from the audience per se. Uh, but, uh, thank you so much for patiently hearing us. It was a very fruitful and interesting discussion. Uh, we look forward to having this kind of discussion henceforth as well. And you will all be invited. Thank you so much and have a good day. I'd now like to invite uh, Nirana Vinesh Pandey for uh, doing the token conversation.